1637, Pierre de Fermat claimed he had a marvelous proof that the equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n has no whole number solutions for n greater than or equal to 3. It took 357 years for Andrew Wiles to finally prove it. But today we'll explore an ele elegant geometric argument that gives a glimpse into why it must be true. Step one, simplify the problem. We start with Fermat's famous equation. If a solution exists, we can divide by c to the n. This algebraic step transforms the expression into a over c, all to the power of n, plus b over c, all to the power of n, equals 1. Now let's define p equals a over c and q equals b over c. With this substitution, the equation becomes much simpler. p to the n plus q to the n equals 1. This is the normalized Fermat equation. Step 2, the complex number insight. We will now translate the algebraic problem into a geometric one. To do this, we define a complex number z as p to the power of n over 2 plus i times q to the power of n over 2. Why? because the norm or length of z is the square root of p to the n plus q to the n. But from our normalized equation, we know that p to the n plus q to the n is just 1, which means the norm of our complex number z must be exactly 1. This has a critical implication. If a non-trivial solution exists, it must correspond to a point z on the unit circle. So the question is no longer about numbers, but about geometry. Can z land on the unit circle if p and q are rational? Here's the catch. For z to lie on the unit circle, its real and imaginary parts must satisfy p to the n over 2 equals cosine theta and q to the n over 2 equals sine theta. But for n greater than or equal to 3, p to the n over 2 and q to the n over 2 are almost always irrational, even if p and q are rational. For example, if p equals 1 half and n equals 3, then p to the 3 over 2 is approximately 0.3535, which is irrational. Meanwhile, Neven's theorem tells us the only rational values of cosine theta for nice angles are 0 plus or minus 1 half and plus or minus 1. But if cosine of theta equals 1 half, then sine of theta must equal the square root of 3 over 2, which is irrational. So unless p or q is 0, z can't have both coordinates rational and stay on the unit circle. This means the only possible solutions are the trivial ones, p equals 1 and q equals 0, or vice versa. But Fermat's last theorem is about non-trivial solutions, where A, B, and C are all positive. Since our geometric argument rules those out, Fermat's claim holds. For n equals 2, rational points like 3 over 5 and 4 over 5 work fine. These are the Pythagorean triples. But for n greater than or equal to 3, the algebra and geometry conspire to make solutions impossible. The normalized equation p to the n plus q to the n equals 1 has no non-trivial solutions. And therefore, for n greater than or equal to 3, no complex point of the form z equals p to the n over 2 plus i times q to the n over 2 can lie on the unit circle if p and q are non-trivial rational numbers. So was Fermat's original proof anything like this? We'll never know. But this geometric approach gives us a beautiful intuition for why his last theorem must be true. While this argument may not be a complete formal proof, it shows a method for tackling the problem without needing the complexity of elliptic curves or Wiles's proof. If you enjoyed this, hit like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Do you think Fermat truly had a proof, or was he mistaken?